Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what vitamins are, their benefits, vitamins that benefit people with epilepsy, vitamins that should be avoided, and if you should make vitamins a part of your care plan. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link in the description section below and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. According to Harvard Health, vitamins are organic substances that are either classified as fat soluble or water soluble. Vitamins are needed for us to be able to have healthy cell function, growth, and development. There are 13 essential vitamins that the human body needs. They are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, vitamin B5, vitamin B7, and vitamin B9. Vitamins provide many benefits to our bodies Foods such as fruits, vegetables, eggs, lean meats, and milk are examples of foods providing essential nutrients to the body. Not everyone needs to take supplements and can get what their body needs through a healthy diet and proper exercise. For those who are battling chronic illnesses such as epilepsy, supplements can be beneficial. Not all supplements are safe for individuals with epilepsy. Before adding any supplements to your care plan, discuss it with your neurologist or epileptologist first. There are vitamins that can help individuals with epilepsy reduce seizure activity. According to the article, Natural Approaches to Epilepsy, nutrients that can help reduce seizure frequency are vitamin B6, magnesium, vitamin E, manganese, taurine, dimethylglycine, and omega-3 fatty acids. Vitamin B6 is a water-soluble vitamin found in many foods and supplements. Vitamin B6 helps to support the immune function and brain health. According to Harvard, the recommended dietary allowance for men 14 to 50 years of age is 1.3 milligrams daily and 1.7 milligrams for ages 51 and up. For women ages 14 to 18, 1.2 milligrams is recommended, 19 to 50 years 1.3 milligram and over 51 1.5 milligram. Magnesium is in a variety of foods and is responsible for carrying out various chemical reactions. Examples are building proteins, strong bones, regulating blood sugar, blood pressure, muscle function, and nerve function. Magnesium serves also as an electrical conductor that contracts muscles and regulates the heartbeat. According to Harvard, the recommended dietary allowance for adult men 19 to 51 years of age and older is 400 to 420 milligrams daily and 310 to 320 milligrams daily for women. Vitamin E is a fat soluble vitamin. Its role is to act as an antioxidant scavenging loose electrons known as free radicals that can damage cells. Vitamin E also enhances immune function and prevents clots from forming in the arteries of the heart. According to Harvard, the recommended dietary allowance for men and women over the age of 14 is 15 milligrams daily or 22 international units. Manganese is a trace mineral that our bodies needs. However, the human body does not make manganese. Foods such as whole grains, oysters, mussels, nuts, soybeans, rice, and leafy vegetables are important and should be a part of our nutrition intake. Manganese is responsible for breaking down carbohydrates, protein, 
and cholesterol, as well as assisting enzymes in building bones. Manganese also helps in keeping the immune and reproductive systems running smoothly and working with vitamin K to help in wound healing and clotting of the blood. According to Harvard, the recommended dietary allowance for adults 19 years of age and up is 2.3 milligrams daily for men and 1.8 milligrams daily for women. Taurine has an effect on the central nervous system. According to the article, Effects and Mechanisms of Taurine as a Therapeutic Agent, Taurine protects the nervous system by antagonizing GABA-A glycine and NMDA receptors. By bonding with the GABA-A receptor, taurine has been shown to decrease seizure activity. Taurine also works to prevent seizure activity by elevating glutamate acid decarboxylase. Studies have shown that taurine acts as an inhibitory neuromodulator, yet only one-third of patients responded favorably to taurine therapy. The most common doses range for taurine is 500 to 3,000 milligrams daily. Dimethylglycine is a derivative of amino acid glycine. Dimethylglycine is found in sources such as beans, cereal grains, brown rice, pumpkin seeds, and liver. It is produced in cells during the metabolism of chlorine and is considered an antioxidant and enhancer of oxygen sation and the cellular level. There are mixed reviews about dimethylglycine being given to patients with epilepsy due to mixed results at clinical trials. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential fats, yet our body does not produce them. Foods such as fish, nuts, flaxseed, and leafy vegetables are good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. According to Harvard, omega-3s are the starting point for making hormones that regulate blood clotting, contraction and relaxation of the arterial walls, and inflammation. Omega-3s have shown to help in preventing heart disease and stroke and can help with the maintenance of lupus, eczema, and rheumatoid arthritis. The recommended dietary allowance for omega-3s is 1.6 grams per day for men and 1.1 grams daily for women. Many people get their source of omega-3s by following a healthy diet rather than taking a supplement. There are supplements that have been tied to increasing seizure activity. In the article, seizures reported in association with the use of dietary supplements, ephedra, caffeine, St. John's wort, and ginkgo biloba were associated with triggering seizure activity. Ephedra, a natural ingredient in the Chinese herb ma wan, became popular for athletes and people who were obese due to its ability to help with weight loss, increasing energy, and alertness. It became one of the most dangerous supplements for many to use, causing heart attacks, strokes, seizures, and sudden deaths. Even though ephedra products only make up 1% of the herbal supplement sales in the United States, 62% of herb-related reports to poison control are due to ephedra. The Food and Drug Administration banned the sale of ephedra-containing products in 2004 after many clinical trials showed that ephedra did not produce the results that the manufacturers claimed. Even before ephedra was banned by the FDA, the Olympics, NFL, and U.S. military banned the use of ephedra. Caffeine can be a trigger for some individuals with epilepsy. In the article, Caffeine and Seizures, a Systematic Review and Quantitative Analysis, it was found that caffeine lowered the efficacy of several drugs, especially to priamate. Caffeine triggering seizures for individuals with epilepsy is rare. However, it is something all individuals with epilepsy need to consider when it comes to their care. According to Mayo Clinic, St. John's wort is a supplement that has been used to treat depression, menopausal symptoms, and somatic symptom disorder. 
St. John's Ward has been known to interact with anticonvulsant medication, increasing the risk for someone to have a seizure. A clinical trial from 2000 to 2001 was conducted to see the reaction St. John's Ward had with Tegretol. Results showed the St. John's Ward increased the metabolism of Tegretol, reducing the levels of Tegretol in the bloodstream. According to Mount Sinai, Ginkgo biloba is one of the oldest tree species and has a long use in treating blood disorders and memory issues. Ginkgo biloba contains a toxic material in it known as ginkgo toxin. According to the American Chemical Society, ginkgo toxin seems to alter a chemical signaling pathway that can trigger epileptic seizures. It has been known to have an effect on anticonvulsant medications, causing an increase of risk in seizure activity. When it comes to making any changes to your care plan, such as starting to take vitamins, it is important to always discuss it with your neurologist or epileptologist. Depending on the type of epilepsy you have and what medication you take can determine what vitamins would be best for you. In conclusion, Vitamins are organic substances that are generally classified as either fat-soluble or water-soluble. Vitamins are needed for us to be able to have healthy cell function, growth, and development. There are many vitamins and supplements that can be beneficial to individuals with epilepsy and some that should be avoided. Before adding any supplements to your plant, it is best to seek advice from your neurologist or epileptologist. To learn more about vitamins and epilepsy, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.